I was a replacement on Dark Shadows. There's a fellow that had played my part a couple of times that I knew nothing about him. I never saw him. I didn't know a thing about him. I was pretty close to, this is the same as Johnny, Johnny Frid, Jonathan. Johnny! Jonathan Frid. Jonathan was going out the door and he got a phone call. I was pretty much in the same boat taking my wife and child to California. And the phone did ring and Star Kessel team, my agent, said, John, these people want you. This wasn't, they were, I didn't have to read, I didn't have to do anything. They wanted me for the part. I said, I don't want to do a soap opera. I'm not going to, I'm getting mad at you. What are you doing to me, Stark, for Christ's sake? I want to do something. I want to be somebody. I don't want to be on a soap opera. He said, Doug, please. Blah, blah, blah. So I went down. I saw them. I see this thing. I said, wait a minute. I'm going to be in New York, still in New York, make a couple of bucks, do another Broadway play, maybe. So I say, okay, to Dark Shadows not really knowing what the hell I'm saying okay to or whatever it is. Vampires, this and that, sounded like I don't even know what. So there I am. I do the first show, and all of a sudden I got this strange character, Willie Loomis, southern white trash, coming from the bowels of nothing. It was great. It was a fun part. And I did it with this little bit of w worthless southern accent, frightened to death half the time, crazed. And one exciting part after another. I mean, something that was started off stealing jewels with this wonderful character, Jason. And um, it was absolutely fun to start with. It was like, I, I, what was I doing? What the hell kind of, is this really acting? I don't know what I'm doing. But it seems that my emotions are coming out fun in this and I don't know why I mean because it's expressive it's this and you you've got a, a lot of what is it a lot of when it's way out there latitude longitude whatever the hell it is range you could yell you could scream you could do anything you wanted to do on this show right up my alley theatrical uh, uh, reality theatrical reality which is a hell of a lot better than hey, well, you know come over here this was Bingo, bango, bang, way out there. So I loved it. I did, I really did. Dan Curtis and I, his wife, my wife, we became great friends. We had supper, many, many evenings together. So he got to be a true friend. And of course he hired me in 20 other different things after Dark Shadows. So we start with Dan Curtis. I didn't know who the boss was. I didn't know anybody. I'm hired, I'm doing a couple of shows. So I pass, I could pretty much, as I'm recalling it now, I'm seeing Dan, nice young man at the time, and a nice sweater and great pants, and with a golf club in his hand, and looking cocky as any human being can look on top of the world, just, you know, whatever. I guess there were other people in this world, but I don't think he noticed them too much. <laughs> but there was great old Dan, full beautiful head of hair with flashing teeth and all that. And I looked at him, I said, how you doing? How you doing? Nothing, you know, like... Uh, and maybe after a week, he might have come up to me and said, you know, hey, okay, good, man. You know, so he was, he was right there. And we became great friends over the years. I'm not so sure that happened right at the beginning. But what I remember most about this show is nobody told me anything to do. I did exactly what I wanted. Leela Swift was the, was the mainstay responsible for, the, for that. She said, go, and I went. So she was the one that set the tone for whoever else was going to be directing me or at that particular time. So I had a feast, a feast of emotion on that show. I wish I could do it again, because I, I could really do it better now with a little bit of logic, a, just a drop, which I didn't have at the time. Maybe I still don't have it, I don't know. But it was fun. It was a fun acting performance. It wasn't like doing a part on a soap opera. This was major theater. You could scream. You could yell. You could go into Greek tragedy. You could go into Shakespeare. You could use your voice. I loved it. I really did. Willie Loomis is Barnabas Collins' slave. He's a slave. He has no rights. He has nothing. He is completely under the power of Barnabas Collins. So whatever Willie Loomis was 
before he met Barnabas doesn't count. It doesn't come into the picture. What does come into the picture is you find out that he has compassion for other human beings and all that. But Willie Loomis is Barnabas Collins' slave under his spell. Yeah. Willie Loomis is Paul White trash, comes from the bowels of the South, hops freight trains, petty thief, steals things, came in contact with this other character named Jason somewhere down the line, and they had pulled a couple of jobs together. Jason calls Willie on this job and the family jewels of the Collinses to steal them. And Willie's excited. This is, sounds like big time. So they get together. He gets Willie into the house as like a servant to clean up the silver or do whatever, whatever that stuff. Finally, they plan the stealing of the jewels. Willie somehow decides to go ahead and do it by himself. So he goes into the mausoleum, the tomb. It's all they're waiting for him. There's all these coffins, and he's figuring there are the coffins, and then these coffins are the family jewels of the Collinses. Going to be a rich man, probably not even include Jason in it. So there he is breaks the chains on the coffin, decides to open it up, and lo and behold, what happens? Blah. A hand comes out. The beginning of the end for Willie Loomis as a human being. He is now all slave, true slave, for the rest of eternity until Barnabas Collins dies, which of course is never. In that time, as we were doing this, this was 1967, you could not bite another man on the neck. <laughs> it was not allowed on television. So I was not bitten on the neck by Barnabas Collins. I was bitten <laughs> on the wrist. <laughs> and I used to have a bandage around my wrist. <clears throat> but I was infected, of course, with the venomous stuff. Let's call it just stuff that Barnabas put into my system. And I was then infected and therefore became the slave of Barnabas Collins. <laughs>